Welcome back everybody to a special episode where I'm going to be listing my top 20 films that just happen to be black and white. This is something a lot of the people in the movie community have been doing and I saw Ian's video where he listed his uh, top 20 black and white films, I'll put a link below. And yeah, I don't really consider them to be different movies as if they were like some sort of genre, but these are the top 20 black and white films that I have seen. And yeah, they just happen to be black and white and my favourite. So, let's start the countdown. Coming in at number 20 will be Some Like It Hot. This is my absolute favourite comedy, I would probably say. And it's just outrageously funny. Marlon Monroe, Tony Curtis, Jack Lemmon. The performances are fantastic. I mean, it's just so funny. Basically, two musicians, Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon, uh, witness a gang shootout. And they end up having to run out of town. And they end up joining the, uh, a music band of girls. So, they dress as girls. And from there, it's just non-stop polarity, and I just love how it ends. Oh, I'm a man! Well, nobody's perfect. One of the best lines out of a film. Number 19 for me is gonna have to be City Lights, which is in this box set. This box set will be coming up every once in a while, because there's quite a lot of Chaplin films in this list. Again, City Lights is touching and funny, and one of Chaplin's best. Just to check it out. Number 18 is Sunset Boulevard, where we have a look at silent movie stars uh, years later, after the silent era ended. And it's really interesting to see what they've done. I mean, even back then, we were seeing the obsession with the celebrity image. And we could see the character hasn't got over it, the, the main character who's on the poster. It's a great film from director Billy Wilder. He also directed Some Like a Hat. I certainly look forward to looking at more of his films. And Sunset Boulevard is excellent. Number 17 is Knights of Cabiria from Federico Fellini in the 50s. And uh, Knights of Cabiria tells the story of a prostitute who finds herself hoping for romance and eventually she starts to find it but things start to go wrong and we just see this turmoil and the stuff that happens to her you, you can't help but feel sorry for her and I think it's great. I, love, I need to watch it again actually but yeah, great movie and definitely has one of the best movie endings. Number 16 will be Chaplin's The Gold Rush, another hilarious film and has some of the best comedy sequences. I mean, there's the scene when he hallucinates the chicken, the scene whenever he is eating the boot, the famous bread roll dance, and the last 20 minutes is fabulous. Number 15 would be the precursor horror film, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. German expressionism at its finest, probably. And I really need to see this one again, and I look forward to the Masters of Cinema release coming out uh, later next month. And The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari is a somewhat Frankenstein kind of story about this doctor and his creation. It's one of the most visually astounding films I've ever seen. Whenever I first watched it a couple of years ago, I was just hypnotised. And yeah, it's a special kind of film. Definitely check that one out as well. Number 14 will be The Elephant Man. This one just tugged at my heartstrings and it's such a touching story. Some people I've heard actually don't like this very much, but I, for me, it's a very touching story about uh, being mistreated due to physical appearance. And the character John Merrick is one of my favourite and the quote that's even on the front cover, I am not an animal, I'm a human being, I am a man. Yeah, it's a great quote uh, from David Lynch, set, uh, filmed in black and white, very fitting to the story. And yeah, this is one, I, I need to see this one again too. There's lots lots in this list that I need to rewatch. And Alpha Man is one of the most emotional films I've ever seen. Number 13 is Akiru. To live. From Akira Kurosawa, this film tells the story of Takashi Shimura's character who comes down with cancer and basically we have a look at his life. I think this must be one of the first films to deal with the issue of cancer and it does it really well, completely unflinching, very true to life kind of story and Shimura's expression throughout the film says it all. Akira is a fantastic movie again, highly recommend that. It's a good entry for a Kurosawa film if you haven't seen anything. From him yet. Number 12 will be Fritz Lang's M. Um, telling the story of a child uh, murderer, uh, Hans Becker, who finds himself being chased by everyone in society. Again, there's lots of German expressionism in here, and the performance from Peter Lorre is great. Number 11 will be Seven Samurai. I don't have the DVD to show you because I just sold it because I want the Blu ray. I've said again in my previous video that Seven Samurai is one of the best action movies. Its influence can be seen, even got remade as The Magnificent Seven, the western. And yeah, I just love the action, the drama, everything. Just a, a really great story that it tells, where we see the, this hopeless little village being terrorised by clans. Then they have to go hunting for some samurai to protect them, along with Mifune, amongst others. 
they end up gathering all the samurais to protect them. And it's got one of the best final hours I've ever seen in a film. Number 10 is Greed, which is one I definitely need to see again. And I really don't hear much of this one. And I really hope it gets a good Blu-ray DVD release because there hasn't been a decent one. I first saw this film about three years ago and I haven't seen it since. I watched the four hour version of it. And it's a fascinating, fascinating film. It's a very simple kind of story. Greed, uh, someone gets inheritance money. And it just deals with the troubles money can bring, you know, how it can corrupt people, how it can just make people obsessed with having money. It's really interesting because there was ten and a half hours of footage and six hours of it was lost or destroyed. I can't remember why, but yeah, six hours of that film was wrecked, destroyed, completely gone. Which is kind of a tragedy because I would love to see more of it, believe it or not. Well, the four hour version is a reconstruction, but I, I honestly recommend it. I, I wasn't bored for a second watching it. Number nine is The Kid. Even after three viewings, it still chokes me up to see that scene when the tramp is being separated from uh, little ch child Jackie Coogan. And the comedy in it is fantastic as well. The dream sequence, although it seems misplaced, it's very well executed and I just love it. I also love the fight scene. But yes, The Kid is another great Chapman film. Twelve Angry Men. This is a fantastic film and it was Sidney Lumet's uh, directorial debut. All basically set in the one room of the jury, whenever they're uh, deciding the trial of a young boy who murdered his father. It's a fantastic movie, I mean, just to see how far it goes just in that one room. And every single second of it is entertaining and engaging. It's a really good one to rewatch as well, because there's 12 characters and you can definitely see each one is well written. The performances from every single one of them, the direction, everything is great in that movie. Absolutely love it. Every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. It's a wonderful life. Uh, before I start talking about it, look what that says. Colour version. There was a big issue about this in the 70s or the 80s. Uh, directors were protesting about it, about Hollywood turning classic films into colour, uh, black and white ones into colour. That's just absurd. This is a timeless film, don't ruin it by colour. I haven't even watched the colour version and I don't want to because I think it'll just spoil the image. They did it with Lauren Hardy as well. For some reason, I do, I watched a few of them and it's just, it doesn't look right, it doesn't feel natural at all. I don't like the idea of turning it into colour. Anyway, I rambled a bit there. It's a Wonderful Life is one of my favourite films and I try to watch it every single Christmas Eve. Because, although it's not really that Christmas oriented, I don't know, it just gives me this wonderful feeling at the end, as it does with pretty much anyone that watches it. If it doesn't, you don't really have a soul. Uh, but yes, It's a Wonderful Life tells a very touching story about James Stewart. Who he, Starts to find the value in his life and through the guardian angel who shows him his life and what it would be like if he wasn't there. He starts to change his mind and value his life a bit more. Again, full of life affirming messages and Frank Capra's direction is great. Lovely film. If you haven't seen that yet, I mean, you really have to watch it. A true classic. Psycho. My favourite horror film, which I need to watch again very soon. Psycho is, it just goes unprecedented. What stood for at the time, 1960, had just kind of changed the way horror films were made. And yeah, I I still find Norman Bates one of the creepiest characters in cinema ever. And when I very first watched it, I was just blown away by how much I enjoyed it. So many themes going on in it, especially with Norman Bates' obsession with his mother. But Psycho is a fantastic movie. I highly recommend that if you haven't seen it yet. One of my favourites, Metropolis. This is one of the best silent films ever made. And... Just completely blew me away when I first watched it. I recently watched it again earlier this year and I loved it just as much. The themes it tells could not be more relevant today. Looking at the looking at the line between social classes, you've got the city builders, city planners, all the upper tier people. And then beneath the city we have where the workers live, the working class people. Now that itself is a fantastic metaphor for how things work in this society and you can even see that reflect upon reality itself. Uh, Metropolis is full of fantastic sets. I can't get over the set designs. I do like CGI at times, but like films like Lord of the Rings, you know, it combines CGI and set design. It's the set designs that I love the most, and it really shows some creative work. And in Metropolis, the scope is fantastic. Rashomon. Rashomon tells a story from three different perspectives, and it's up to you to decide which one you think is the truth. And the thing is, we really don't know what the truth is. 
Even after watching three times, I'm not sure what story I want to believe. Perhaps all of them have no credibility at all. Again, it's a fascinating film, 90 minutes, really good to rewatch, evaluate your feelings on it. And it's one that definitely endorses uh, analysis. Redbeard. Redbeard is Kurosawa's most emotional film, if you ask me, and it really looks at the human soul. Some of his finest cinematography as well is in there, and the Fune plays a powerhouse performance once again. Very emotional film, absolutely loved it. Modern Times, an absolute masterpiece of comedy. Everything that happens to Chaplin's character in this is great. You see him going from the assembly line where he just goes nuts, and I'm sure people would go nuts. I mean, people even go nuts at scanning things at Tesco or other supermarkets. So you can only imagine what it's like to work on an assembly line. Very strong themes looking at the Industrial Revolution of, you know, not too long before that film came out, you know, from the late 1800s. And it was something that really did affect the economy. And I think the way Chaplin captured it in the film is great. Again, lots of fantastic humour. And it tells a somewhat romantic story too. Number one, you may have guessed, is The Great Dictator in this box set. And again, there's a lot of hilarious moments in it. Absolutely fantastic. Great Dictator is easily one of my top five films, and I love that end speech, as I've said before. Uh, you can find that on YouTube, it's got millions of views. Yeah, fantastic scene. And overall, yeah, the film has a message of gold. Well, thanks for joining me for my top 20 black and white films. If you want to go ahead and make your own list, go for it. I'd love to see some lists being made through a video. If not, just comment below what your favourite black and white films are. We'd love to hear what your choices are. Once again, keep an eye out for more uploads. We'll be getting some more up this week. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe and all that jazz. And I'll see you next time.